One morning as I was sitting, stitching by the open window, she burst in and flew at me. Give him up, she screamed. He's mine. Her photographs were kind to her. Seeing her now for the first time, full length and in the flesh, I understood why he preferred me. What are you talking about? I said, stitching away. Someone yours? Give up who? Smell you off him, she screamed. He stinks, you <coughs> bitch. Fearing she was about to offer me violence, I rang for Erskine and had her shown out. Her parting words, as he could testify, if he is still living, has not forgotten coming and going on the earth, letting people in, showing people out, or to the effect that she would settle my hatch. Confess this did alarm me a little at the time. Why don't you get out, I said. And he started moaning about his home life. There's obviously nothing between you anymore. Or is there? Anything between us, he said. What do you take me for? A uh, something machine? Of course, with him, no danger of a spiritual thing. So then why don't you get out, I said. I sometimes wonder if you were not living with her for her money. She came again. Oh, honey, licking her lips, just strolled on in, poor thing. I was doing my nails by the open window. Oh, he's told me all about it, she said. Who he, I said, filing away. What it? I know what torture you must be going through, she said. And I've dropped by to say I bear you no ill feeling. I rang for Erskine. Mm -hmm. When he came again, we had it out. I felt like death. He went on about why he had to tell her too risky and so on. It meant that he had gone back to her. Back to that. He went on and on. I could hear a mower, an old hand mower. I stopped him. Said that whatever I might feel I had no silly threats to offer. But not much stomach for her leavings, either. He thought that over for a bit. The only solution was to go away together. He swore we would as soon as he had put his affairs in order. In the meantime, we were to carry on as before. By that, he meant as best we could. stopped coming, I was prepared. Marla. I made a bundle of his things and burnt them. It was November. The bonfire was going all night. I saw them smoldering. Say I am. Say I am not. More restful, less confused. Less confusing. At the same time, I prefer this to the other thing, definitely. Good. Give me up as a bad job. 
go away and start poking and pecking at someone else. And on the other hand, things may disimprove, there is that danger. Oh, you might get angry and blaze me clean out of my wits, mightn't you? It would not be like you somehow, and you must know I am doing my best, or don't you? No doubt I made the same mistake as when it was the sun that showed of looking for sense where possibly there is none. Are you listening to me? Is anyone bothered? Now that all the danger is averted, that poor creature, I can hear her, that poor creature, that poor creature who tried to seduce you, oh, whatever became of her, do you suppose I can hear her, poor thing? They might even feel sorry for me if they could see me, but ever so sorry as I for them. Kissing their sour kisses. What do you do when you go out? Like dragging a great roller in a scorching day. Strain to get it moving. Momentum coming. Kill it and strain again. And you perhaps pitying me, thinking, poor thing, she needs a rest. Perhaps a little unhinged already. I say I might not perhaps a little unhinged already. Just tell her. I died. She had gone to bed. Just a shade. <laughs> 